lambda. Lambdas. Lambda. I want to believe. Arrows. More arrows. Lambdas everywhere. Just messing around. Sorry. Um, well, <laughs> welcome to this talk. Uh, my name is Flavio. I really love lambdas, as you can tell. So um, we're here about to talk about um, a bit more functional React, okay? Or in general, more functional JavaScript. Uh, I like that functional programming has already been mentioned in, in this um, conference, so that is pretty good. And we're talking a bit more, expanding a bit more on this right now. So it has been said also, and it's quite overheard, like they say React is functional. Have you heard that? What's your experience? Yes, right, okay. Everyone has heard that. But then, if React is functional, why all those class and extends? You know, like, well, I just hate it. I'm sorry. Um, so to do a bit more functional React, I could just talk about it, but let's just do an, an example. We're going to refactor some code in a more functional way. And we're going to see what benefits it has, which trade-offs, if it's, it is worth it, what problems might go into that, and whatnot. So I could have chosen literally any uh, component in the world made with a standard React, but I chose uh, one that I especially like because it's, it's awesome. The creator is here, by the way. This is the uh, React Toolbox uh, imitation of the Airbnb calendar. So we're going to refactor that. So this is more or less the code, OK? Let's get into that. We have pretty boring, you know, the usual import, React, and the component stuff. And then we have also the even more boring uh, <laughs> React uh, class and extends component stuff. Well, for this component, it, it's, it's a bit complex, so we need quite a lot of state, but it is a simple component yet. We need some focused input because we're going to display, well, maybe you have seen it before, but we, need, we have two inputs. We have to actually display the values inside every input. We need to know and keep track of which is the input that we're currently on. And we have to also display the range of dates within the calendar. That's what we need the state for. Then we have our usual lifecycle component methods. This one is pretty useless, because we're going to see that the initial value is also set on a, on a prop. But OK, you might want to do this on a lifecycle method. And then our beautiful, so to speak, uh, React this dot set state code starts. So we have this function to just set the, the value, change the value, handle change function. Then we have yet another function, which is handle highlighted change, uh, which just sets the state to the which one is highlighted. And yet another more uh, handler just to check the focused input state, just to change that. And then, OK, in this case, we added some validation. So we wanted to have a method in our class just to prevent users to actually pick a date that it is um, later than today. You normally want to do that. But what is funny about this is that this function is not even used. You know, <laughs> the code. That's the reason why we refactor all our front end code every two weeks. Right, because we <laughs> we just don't want to have dead code, and <laughs> we constantly refactor everything. But you might want to use something like this. Okay, you can we can understand that. Um, then we have another function, handle start input focus. Now we're keeping track on in which input we are, and we have this lovely magic string we would call like start date. Right, we've seen this in many code bases. Uh, another <laughs> handler for the for handling the end date stuff, and finally, a pretty useful uh, and also well in this case is, is used, but another method uh, which is called format, and it, it's not complicated. It just returns a string with the ISO um, version of the, of that date. By the way, you have you might you might have noticed that if you do have a method in your class and you don't use it anywhere in your React component. A slint does not complain. Why? Because there's no way to keep track of if you, have, if you are using instances of your methods uh, or calls 
Whereas if you have arrows or you have functions external to, to the component and you have actually those functions inside of variables, as Lint does know, uh, ES Lint, I don't know how you say that in English, I'm sorry, I'm Spanish. Um, but as Lint, as Lint does know that you are not using, and now VS Code and TypeScript also knows, so you, you get like two chances of deleting your actual dead code. <laughs> and uh, and you, you see that the linter complains, and then you can remove that and use function or variable or whatever. Whereas if you use this uh, method style, you can't. Besides, you have to deal with the whole this uh, thing in, in JavaScript, which is just another reason to puke. And finally, after all this stuff, finally, we got to the important stuff, which is the render method, right? This is where all the magic happens. In the end, React is meant to be just a functional way of receiving an input and rendering an output. It might be JSX or React Native's component, I don't know, whatever. So this is like the, the most uh, important part of our component. So now we can go one by one. We mentioned, the aforementioned the inputs. This is the first input. We see this magic string here again. Uh, well, basically, uh, if we have the value in the state, we format it. On focus, we want to call our handler, which sets the, uh, the focused input to that specific input. And then we have the class active, which is CSS, that we only want to focus on that specific input if, we, if what, whatever is in our, our state, in our focused input prop, um, it's end date. So again, this is where we see our magic strings again. And finally, which is like the most uh, important component, which is the date picker, with our state, with a focused input, the highlighted range of dates that we want to actually display it highlighted, the on-change handler, the unfocused input chain, the on-highlight change, the selected state, and, well, we're in Spain, so, uh, well, Sunday, first day of the week? Okay, I don't care. Uh, I really don't like the American dates. So <laughs> I'm sorry, just, they, they just confuse me. And then I mentioned the, this thing about the lifecycle method, setting the, the default day to view date, uh, well, to today. But we have a prop to do that. It's good to have default, but you can do it somewhere else, right? So in this case, we're setting the default day to this specific date. So there was no need to add a lifecycle method for that. Yeah, I just mentioned that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, how are we going to refactor that to be more functional? Well. How many of you know Recompose? Nice. OK, so there's a big, big audience that yet haven't heard of it. I just love it. So let's go. You can see that it's pretty much less code, but let's see what kind of black magic this is. So mm, we don't need a component uh, name input anymore. This is where we import all the important stuff. Of course, Recompose has a compose function, which is like awesome in functional programming. And then we, we have this weird with state, which is in reality it's a high order component we're, we're going to use. We'll explain how that is used. Well, we're refactoring, aren't we? So I got rid of the, <laughs> of the magic strings so that for just to be happy. And this is just because I'm a freak about dates. I mean, uh, you know, instead of using moment, if you don't know React FNS uh, library, it's like, uh, maybe a fifth uh, of the size of moment, and it just works uh, great. I just wanted the format function, so this is like a, the minimal dependency that you need. Uh, you get formatting like very, very nicely out of the box. And what we do normally in Recompose, as the name might imply, is you compose all the things, or recompose them. So compose is a functional um, method. It, you might be familiar with it, or you might be not, but it's, it's quite easy once you know it. And then you can ask, OK, now we use this with state handler, uh, this higher order component, but what does it actually work? How does it actually work? I mean, what is this magic? Well, it receives three parameters or arguments. The first one is actually the part of your state, the name you want to give to that slide of your state. The second argument is the name that you want to give to the handler for that section of the state. So you don't, don't have to worry about the rest of the state anymore. You just have a handler for that section. And the third argument is just the default state that you want. So you can see, as in our previous definition of set state, uh, we had a, 
some the default state also set to some objects, we can we can do that because th that you can pass anything literally at this th at the, as the third argument, and it will just work. So we do this three times because we need actually like three slices of our state, and and of course three handlers. So focus, highlighted, and value. And then, right now, I mean, you've seen how quickly now we're in the in the render method, in the important stuff. So how how does this work? Well, because everything in recompose, or almost everything, are higher order components. You can use the compose function either from recompose or from Ramda or from Lodash. I mean, lots of libraries have this function. You can implement it one yourself. It's just a reduce function uh, that takes all the functions and turn them into just one function. And now, uh, this is like the enhancer. This is like the actual higher order com component we're going to use, and we're going to just pass our render function. You see, everything is using arrows and const and uh, just func uh, stateless components, functions, and everything is very, very functional. So here we have our, our usual props. You can just do props here, but I like to destructure all the things. So we need the focus, the highlighted, and the value, which are the slices of the state, and the three handlers, which is on change, on focus, and on highlight. Then we can use it, as we saw before, but this time like, the code looks up a bit cleaner. And again, the, the same thing for the date component. And literally, that is it. So, OK, you might be saying, uh, it was pretty tough. I mean, you get used to that. It's actually 50% less code. I mean, literally, in this example, and it, it can be even more in other code bases. And you might be wondering, why this philosophy of less is more? Because, you know, there are some statistics and actually scientific <laughs> things that prove that the more amount of lines of code you have, the more bugs you have. So you want to keep your code base as small, as maintainable as possible to, for you to be easier. OK, so we did refactor with recompose our date picket. But does it actually work? I'm selecting this my next holidays. Yeah, it works. OK, exactly as expected. Nice. It does work. Perfect. OK, so this was one side of the, of the talk. And now let's go for another, another pro tip regarding functional uh, JavaScript. Maybe, these are just maybe, better reducers. Whom of you is just tired of typing the word switch in your reducers? Come on. OK, I'm not alone. Thank you, world. Um, I'm going to. See, to teach you or to show you something very, very nice. I hope you like it and you use it. I promised in the description of my talk that I was going to talk a bit about Fantasyland and the, the whole thing that the lambdas are awaiting. And it's true. This is the bit of Fantasyland that we're going to use. So for, for those of you who are not familiar with it, Fantasyland is like some kind of spec uh, regarding functional JavaScript, which is like uh, a standard heavily inspired by Haskell and, and other uh, FB communities. So Folktale, this library, is just an implementation of the uh, Fantasyland spec. So we import maybe from Folktale. This, these are our actions, you know, that just our function that return our state and maybe a payload if we need that. And these are our handlers. And as you see, the name for this function matches exactly the name of the function I'm assigning as the handler. So there, I don't have to type it twice or whatever. If I pass a string, inc or dec or inc by, since the functions have exactly that name, this is the only object that I need with all my handlers. And you can spread that, you can have it in multiple files, and then just merge into one. And after that, this is the one single reducer that you are going to need in your whole Redux app. Whom of you are familiar or have heard of pattern matching? Have you heard some pattern matching? OK, so this is like an attempt to bring pattern matching to JavaScript, but not really. It's just a funny syntax. So in here, we take maybe, which it is from Haskell, but you, it's very, it's, well, it needs some learning. But once you get used to it, it's, it's very, very type safe and very nice to use. And we, we say from nullable, because the type of the action we're trying to match might not be there. So we need to have this from nullable handler to make sure that it, it, the value might be there or might be not. And then we have this sort of pattern matching thing in which we say, OK, if you didn't actually match any reducer, any function for this specific action that I received, then just return the state. That's why all the default 
in all the switches of your reducer is doing, right? If you don't find anything, just return the state as it is. And if you do find an action, which is the just, extract that function, and because reducers are an action handlers are pure functions, just apply the state and the action that I received to that state. You just need this reducer. This works. Well, you can try it home. I actually have this in a code sandbox. I can share it later. It does work, and it's that easy. You just need this single reducer in your whole application. Whom of you have heard of Crocs or are Maybe you have tried it. OK, yeah, it's not very known, but it's another functional library. So maybe if you don't like the whole pattern matching stuff, uh, Croc, Crocs is like more modular. It has all the functions, more or less, that Ramda has, but also adds some ADTs like maybe, like either, IO, and all that stuff. So we have the same handlers, the same actions. And, and now we say, OK, safe returns a maybe uh, after a predicate. So if we're saying the predicate is if it's not nil, if it's not null. And this is putting everything inside a maybe. And this either takes two callbacks, one from left or, and for right. Left is it doesn't have a, ma a value, and right it does. So if it doesn't have a value, the, the else goes first, then just constantly return the state. Don't do nothing to the state. The constant function doesn't touch anything. And if you do have this function, then without unwrapping it, as in fault day maybe, just apply the state and some actions. And if you try this, it works exactly the same. Does it actually work? Well, this runs React, so it should work. Yeah, it works. OK, so that was all, and thank you. Any questions? <laughs> well, follow me on Twitter or on GitHub, please, <laughs> if you like it. And <laughs> uh, you'll see that I tweet constantly about this kind of stuff. So if you like it, if you're into it, just reach me. OK, thank you. <laughs>